this year I've got big plans for upping my firewood production. And I've always had Husqvarna chainsaws, and I still love Husqvarna chainsaws, but I needed to try a steel chainsaw. I was at a firewood event, actually at Back 40 Firewoods place, uh, probably about two months ago, and I had the opportunity to run a steel 500i, which I had never even considered. I had never considered um, a lot of different steel saws. I've always been happy with my Husqvarna's. I have a 550 XP and a 562 XP, and both have done the job for me. But recently, um, my job has changed, and now I'm in a position where I'm running log splitters often, and so I need to cut the rounds, and getting a faster, more powerful chainsaw is just something that I wanted to do. When I was at that firewood event, Dan handed me that 500i, and I ran it, and I was just blown away. Now, I've been kind of a Husqvarna guy, and um, that has turned me to really want that steel 500i, so I purchased one. In front of me here, I have the steel 500i. I got the 28 inch light bar and chain on it. And you can see with this 28 inch bar, the balance is, it's almost perfect. The 28 inch bar is massive overkill for what I need to do at this point. However, uh, I just wanted it. I, I could have got the 25 inch. And in fact, I did order a 25 inch for it as well. And I ordered a 20 inch for it. And today's video, I'm going to do a couple of different things with this thing. I'm gonna put the 20 inch bar and chain on it. Um, I got some accessories for it that some may seem as useless, but I think they're cool and I think they're gonna help me uh, enjoy the saw more. So I got some aftermarket dogs for it. And I also got this uh, protector plate for the bottom of it. And here I have a scale with me today. So I am going to weigh the saw with the bar and chain on it. I'm gonna weigh just the power head I'm gonna change out those dogs, put this bottom plate on it, weigh it again, and then I'm gonna put the 20 inch bar and chain on it, which is not a light bar, and uh, I'm gonna weigh it again. So stay tuned for the results. So I'm gonna start by just taking the bar and chain off of this. And before I do that, I'll show you something else that's kinda of cool here. I have these chain lockers, and I've got the regular version here, which has the 20 inch chains in it. And then I have the pro version here, which has two different chains in it. I have the 91 driver for the 28 inch steel there. And I have the 84 driver here, which is for my Husqvarna with the 24 inch bar on it. Oddly enough, that 84 driver chain will also work on the steel 25 inch bar once I get it. But I'm gonna grab my scrunch out of here and then I'm gonna start taking the bar and chain off of this chainsaw. Yes, I am doing this on my dining room table with a moving blanket. So make sure the chain brake is disengaged. I'm going to loosen up the bar nuts. I'm going to take the chain tension off a little bit now and spin these. One thing I forgot that's cool is that these are captive bar nuts on this bar cover. So let's take this off now. Set that aside. For the baseline weight, I'm gonna put the bar cover back on and just loosely thread these. Turn this on. So I'm showing a weight of 15 pounds, 12 ounces for just the power head. It is full of bar oil and mostly full of gas oil. And let me pull this off so you can see. So there we go, that's our, that's our power head weight. Now we're gonna take a look at this bottom cover here. What I did was, now this is gonna cover up the bottom part of the chainsaw and I know that some people are gonna hate on it and say, oh, you don't need that, uh, blah, blah, that's fine. You don't, I probably don't need it either, but I want it, so I'm putting it on. I used to work in a saw shop and I would always see the bottoms of these saws just kind of destroyed. And 
You drop it, it falls in the right place. The fuel tank gets cracked, the handle gets cracked. This is an expensive part and it's not really the easiest to change out. So if I can offer a little extra protection for it at a minuscule added weight, I'm gonna do that. One thing to note is that it'll cover up the bar oil adjustment. So I did just turn this to the max flow without pushing the pin detent. If I have to adjust that in the future, I'll have to adjust that in the future. That's just the way it is. These two handle screws will have to come out. And then this is gonna slide up in here and the new hardware is sitting right here. So I'm gonna use the, let's see, this wrench that came with the saw. Take those out. We'll pull these out and you'll see that these are kind of a coarse thread, coarse thread screw, which is what the replacements are as well. Take those out. Now this piece you can see has kind of slotted fingers here and up here. So we'll put it on, we'll slide it forward. We've got it around the handle in both places. This might be a little tricky to do, but We'll see what happens here. There's spacers that came with it. Drop those spacers in where the screws were. Then we'll slide this forward and I should be able to put, line this right back up. Yep, it already started threading. Now these are Phillips screwdriver, or Phillips screws, so I'll have to use a regular Phillips screwdriver to put these in. Snug these up. That was just a chain break. <laughs> so we'll make sure that we close the gap between the metal, between the metal um, panel here and the bushing. And make sure you don't go too tight to strip them out, but put them the way they were. Now we have little added protection on the bottom of the saw. And I would say that it does not negatively affect how the saw looks. You can see here. And on the front part. I think that's kind of cool. All right, now I'm gonna put the dogs on. I'm gonna start with the clutch cover side. I'm going to take my gloves off too because they're not really needed for this part. So here you can see that there's there's captive. Um, the bolts are here, but they're captive in the cover, which is nice. So I just have my eight millimeter. Now, we'll grab the new ones. And you'll be able to tell right away which one goes where. Of course the bolts fell out here, but. And this did come with new bolts as well, but I think they're exactly the same. Yep, they are. So I'm not going to I'm not going to end up using the new bolts. Save those for a rainy day. Let's see if they're not. 
Now I'm going to point out something that they mentioned is important to do to add the chain catcher right here. It'll go between here, this hole and this hole. Um, I have the chain catcher on order, but it has been lost in the mail for the last three or four days. I was supposed to have it before this video, but um, that's just how it goes. So, so I got this one started and we'll tighten that up. Okay. Now we've got this backside one. So here we've got a uh, Torx on this end that that factory wrench fits in. And then on the backside, there is an eight millimeter. So once you break it loose, you'll be able to turn this. And actually, I think I'm just gonna take the bolt out all the way right away. Okay. And this one, let's go right into the tank. And the chain catcher is on this one as well. This one had some, this one had some torque on it. So in order to get this one started, it's a bit tricky because of the way that the chain catcher sits in here. So yeah, I almost have to, let's try this again here. Let's try putting that there first. There. Yeah, you gotta have everything in place and lined up first. And my finger is probably blocking the view here, but let me get this at least threaded here and go on. Okay, so I've got that kind of snug just so it's in sort of where it needs to be. And now I'll put in the top hardware this back in place. Now I'll come back down here, tighten this up. You can see the chain catcher, there's a little bit of room for that to move, but the way that it's formed, it can only go so far. I would highly recommend leaving the chain catcher on. Back in the saw service shop days, we used to see people bring them in, bring saws in all the time with the chain catcher broken off or just completely mangled. And then um, they didn't want to spend the money to get it replaced. This could save you a lot of, uh, a lot of pain and anguish. So I would recommend leaving that on. With the new dogs on and that bottom protector, put her back on the scale. 16 pounds, 13 ounces. Honestly, it's looking like that added about a pound, which is a pretty big deal when you're slinging a saw around all day. So we'll see how it, how it behaves. I think a lot of the weight is in these dogs here, which like I said, you know, kind of like the underside thing, a lot of people will probably think that that's unnecessary. And while it is, it's something that I wanted to do. But now I'm gonna weigh the bars and chains and see what we got there. So up first is the 28 inch light bar. This is three ace, 50 gauge, and 91 drivers, as I recall. Let's make sure I'm correct there. Yep. And looks like we're at three pounds, 11 ounces, 11.2 ounces. So let's see what it looks like with the 20 now. Now, the 20 that I have here is not a light bar and I have to grab the chain out for that as well. Fair is fair here. So
so. And just so you know, I'm not, I'm not cheating here. Let's uh, pick this up. Now we're at zero. The 20 inch bar and chain. This again is a non-light bar. We're at three pounds, 10 ounces. So that's really not that big a difference. Let's try this again here. Let's try if I can get both on camera at the same time. So that 28 inch light bar and chain is coming in at one ounce more than that 20 inch standard bar and chain. It'd be interesting to see what the 25 inch light bar and chain comes in at. I've got that set up on the way right now. And that's probably what I'm going to end up using on the saw most of the time. But uh, I wanted to kind of have a little bit of everything here. I'm going to put the 20 inch bar and chain on now. This is the way I've always done it. Right, wrong or otherwise. Put it on the bar first. Okay, I come down here, get it around the sprocket. And then if I, I can lightly rest it here and it'll stay there. Then we will put the bar cover back on, kind of put some pressure on that. And you can see I just pulled on that. So we got a lot of uh, slack to take up here. So we'll tension this now. Kind of flip it back in. Now everybody has differing opinions on chain tension. I think you should be able to pull it out, but it should snap back in. Yeah, and you should be able to freely move it like that. So now I'm going to tighten these up. And these don't need to be He-Man torque, they just, they need to be tight. So keep everything together. And then I will check my setup one more time. Yeah, we're, we should be good. Now I've got my new 500i all set up and ready for cutting firewood. On Friday, I actually have to go make a bunch of rounds at work um, to get prepped for the next section of videos. So it'll be a perfect time to test it. And if I remember, I'll get a video or two of this up, put them up as shorts on YouTube. One thing I thought was interesting was that, you know, Steel's a, a German brand. They've got factories everywhere. And I was unaware they had one in Brazil. This saw bar is actually one from their Brazil plant. So it was surprising to me when I got this shipped to me and I thought that and I thought, hmm, is this <laughs> the real deal or not? But it is. And uh, here's the packaging it came from, or it came in. And uh, you can see, we've got the steel part numbers and everything there. And on the back side, it's all it's all basically Brazilian. So um, I just thought that was interesting. And even on the box here, they've got made in Brazil. So I was told that they have overrun of saw bars being produced in Brazil. So sometimes you'll get a saw bar from Brazil, sometimes you'll get one from Germany. Probably only applies to certain bar part numbers and configurations, I'm not 100% sure. I'm really looking forward to using this thing. I have been using my 550 XP with an 18 inch bar on it, and it's been working awesome, but this thing is gonna have I know a ton more power, of course it should. It's in a much different class and it's got a lot more power than that 550 XP. So that's nothing against the Husqvarna. I really like both brands and uh, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Uh, let me know in the comments section what kind of saw you're running. As I continue to grow this channel, I'll be doing more and more content on firewood related stuff as I build a small firewood business uh, with my daughter. So I thank you guys for watching, subscribe for more.